My name is Fred Burroughs. I'm the fire chief for the city of Fort St. John. Fort St. John is located in northeast British Columbia along the Alaska Highway. Our city is about uh, 25,000 people. We have a fire protection area of about 16 square miles, but a highway rescue area of where we travel over 200 kilometers in west and north directions. This truck is being built as a hazmat command unit for our city. Our city is really built on oil and gas and agriculture. So we have a large presence of oil and gas development with a lot of hazardous materials in our community. This particular unit is built on a MetroStar medium four-door, but we opted to have the two rear doors removed to allow for the cab to be enlarged to provide a command area in the back with desks, computers, and workstations along with the two seating positions. When we work our way down the truck, once we get past the cab, we enter through the uh, curbside and we enter into the back of the truck through the curbside doorway, which allowed us to have a maximum cab space without having a door on the curbside. Inside we have facilities, cooking, microwave, fridge, coffee maker, those kind of things for the kind of stuff to keep you prolonged at long incidents. Inside we have four workstations on the slide outs and they're all interconnected to the workstation in the front. One of the features of the truck is the 32 inch slide out. We have windows at both ends to allow for viewing along with above. And on the curb side of the truck, this position here has a radio, it has the AMX system and it has the control for our command light light tower. This monitor gives us the ability through the AMX, which is this, to display our incident action plans and other instructions to our crews at the scene without them entering the truck and converse back and forth through our intercom system command or who's giving the direction around the incident action plan. Inside the truck, which we'll see later, there's a smart board which we develop all that information and then shoot it to the exterior of the truck. The 32 inch slide allows us to have a conference table down the middle of the truck and allows us to have six chairs on the inside of the truck so we can work and have meetings and video conference with other organizations. On this side of the truck, beyond the slide out, we have two layers of storage. The bottom shelf is a thousand pound full through a shelf that deploys 75% to the exterior of the truck. The top tray has a 50 pound weight capacity with a very good tilt down for reaching other tools that maybe you don't use all the time, but you uh, want on the ready on the exterior of the truck. This compartment is designed for uh, six SCBA with the one hour cylinders for our hazmat group. All the storage and compartmentation on the exterior and upstairs in this truck is designed to work around our hazmat incident center with our hazmat team. As with other rescue trucks, you may not see the same equipment or you'll see less of it, but it is purposely designed for uh, hazmat response with the uh, one hour cylinders. This compartment has our 150 foot cord reel. It has a small slide out trays and then it has our toolboxes for small tools we've been using like for non-fires tools, we can store them uh, out of the way, but uh, conveniently easy access. Here at the rear of the truck, we have storage under the stairway and this allows us to store some of our larger uh, hazmat equipment. Our plan for this truck is to store our inflatable 13 by 15 dressing room in here. Our heaters are for our cold weather. In our area, we do experience long winters with temperatures in the minus 30 area. So it's important to have these extra things such as propane powered heaters, the uh, air inflated tent and other um, less used equipment. but totally important for our environment. Up here on the roof, we have three antenna rails to, uh, for all our communication systems, for our base camp radio system that allows us to have that interoperability with other agencies when we're forced to be there. If you notice on this one, compared to a regular rescue, these bins are very deep. And for that reason, we had SVI put two trays in on the midsections and 
We can keep all our hazmat equipment at this level, but in bins and easily removed um, for uh, use at the scene. With this truck, we ordered not only a light tower, but we ordered a camera on an extendable um, telescoping tower. And it comes up at the rear of the truck. It allows us to be set up back from the scene, view the scene without engaging too many personnel until we've determined what the incident action plan is going to be. The camera, based on specifications that uh, we reviewed, should be able to pick up the size of a license plate at about 300 meters. So it is a uh, very powerful camera and uh, it allows us to do both day and nighttime. So on this side of the truck, to go along and correspond with heating and that, we'll be storing gas in here, propane, for our propane powered heating systems for the hazmat tent. In this compartment, similar to the other side, but more storage, drop down shelves, fixed shelves, and smaller and more of type uh, things to be stored in these compartments. In this compartment, same thing, we have the full length unseen uh, 1,000 pound slide out tray. Same thing, comes out 70% uh, of the truck depth to allow whatever we're storing on there to be reached from either side, depending on the location of the incident. Just SCBA holders, some departments use them for fire extinguishers, we're using them for spare bottles. In here, the command portion of the truck uh, is very well laid out. We have all our electrical distribution uh, when we first walk in the door. On this side, we have our racks. It has our Bosch telescoping camera and our Bosch DVD recording system. It has all our radio systems for our base camp. It has our other radio systems in here, and then it has interfaces for a weather station and for between the front and the back and the AMX system. This it has the four positions. This position was left free A for just to be a workstation for paperwork and or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police will bring in their own equipment and will store it on the truck and they can set it up. So that allows us to have a vacant spot. All overhead compartments are deep. Some of them have power in them. Our wireless phones, there are four wireless phones that go with the base camp system. All the fronts are, are magnetic and they're whiteboard writing boards. In the center, fold out conference table. It has uh, the ability to sit six people around the conference table. We have all our chairs that go with it are, are here. We have 110 volts on each end of the conference table wired in. We have USB in the center and we have network cables into the center of the table. This allows us in conjunction with the camera on our clock, allows us to video conference with other agencies or internally within ourselves and the city of Fort St. John in their EOC or any other uh, agency that we need to engage. This is our smart board, which allows us, as I mentioned earlier, to develop our incident action plans, develop it in here. We can shoot it out through the AMX to the exterior. So the shift captains, and whoever's doing operations on the outside of the truck can review that. And then we have communications with them on the outside if there's questions or other information to be relayed. On this side, we have the controller, which is USB connected for the Bosch camera. So it allows us to take some extra control features elsewhere in the truck. A lot of control features for the Bosch telescoping camera are on the AMX system. The phone system, as you see, is run through the base camp system, which creates that interoperability with other agencies at the scene and outside the region. Right now, we've got no cameras displaying because all the cameras are turned off, but we have multiple features in regards to how many screens we can watch at one time. The AMX allows us to shoot this information up to there or over to that workstation or the outside or something from the front to the rear. You might notice the blackout screens and that just helps if we're in an area where it's a bright sunny day and the sun shining through the windows to try and stop the distortion or the sun shining on the screens. And it also helps if it's really, really warm out to reduce the amount of heat coming through the windows, uh, heating up this small space. We're in the command portion of the truck behind the driver's seat, but outside the body. 
This area is designed for the command person to work from. We've got viewing from either side of the truck. There is another spot here. You could have a second chair in if you had to have a meeting or something along those lines. Back here, which is different, we still have the screen, the computer access, the server. We have the phone system, radios, the AMX, but we also have a multi a VMUX system. And the VMUX in this area allows the commander to adjust some of the features from here without having the driver reposition in the seat, such as he can do the uh, exhaust diversion. Uh, we can divert our exhaust from the right side or left side of the truck, depending where we are, or what the scenario or situation might be. If we're in a situation where everybody has to be street side, we can get the exhaust to go curbside. So it's just those kind of features that are back here on here, along with the operation of generator and then air conditioning controls for this part of the truck, because the features of air conditioning in the back don't affect this part of the truck. But it has all the same features as out there, with just a few little extras without the large capacity. All the cabinets are lit, and then on the curbside up high, we have a printer. So whatever requires a paper hard copy from any part of the truck can be sent to the printer in here, and we can distribute hard copies such as MSDS or uh, special data information from Wiser or somebody like that in regards to the chemical product we may be dealing with or uh, something in regards to our pre-fire pre plans if it's a structure fire and some sort of special hazard. One of the features that this truck has is because it's very similar to what you see a large recreational vehicle in regards to weight and width is we kneel our truck. It has air suspension so we have the ability to kneel the truck like a transit bus and then after that happens and lowers down and makes our side entry steps a little more accessible and then we have a Bigfoot system on board which is similar to an RV which the feet go down when deployed to stabilize the vehicle so when we're working inside people are moving around the truck doesn't rock back and forth move side to side it's very firm this kind of a unit will be particularly useful in the future as LNG becomes a big part of our makeup in Fort St. John and the chemicals and the uh, resource development that happens with it.